In Gunner Heat PC, when it comes to the NATO main battle tank offerings, the M1 Abrams and the M1 IP simply brings to the table a tremendous asset in terms of its fire control system and ballistics computation capabilities. Uh, specifically, the M1 IP and the M1 Abrams will be discussed today as the M60A3 TTS, though it does feature a 105mm M68E1 cannon, which is an older predecessor to the M68A1 cannon on the Abrams. They do have some differences in the fire control systems. This will be illustrated in a later video. So please don't forget to subscribe and enable the icon so you don't miss these. The gunner's primary sight in the Abrams is a simplified amalgamation of both manual and computer-assisted targeting data, and instead of the older, more traditional gunner sights that kind of illustrate the, the selected rounds drop over distance, a simplified reticle is displayed in red illumination only, and the central circle has a pinpoint dot that is the primary focal point of the desired point of impact. From the gunner's primary sight, the gunner can utilize a laser rangefinder by selecting the E key. The resulting range will be displayed in a large green number below the simplified reticle, and it is important to note that the laser rangefinder updates the ballistics data for the computer based on the ammunition that is already selected. So, for example, a ballistics computation for an APFSDS round in comparison to a heat fin stabilized projectile at the same range will vary significantly and can lead to a round landing short or overshooting the target. Just above and to the left of the range data, a green square will appear whenever the main gun is both loaded and has a clear line of sight to the intended target. If the square does not present after the loader audibly confirms the gun is loaded and the ammunition selection indication turns white, try relazing the target for an updated firing solution. If this does not work, then there may be terrain or obstruction between your gun and the target, uh, and repositioning basically may be required. It's, it's important to note this is not an uncommon occurrence and may happen uh, frequently. Automatic lead compensation can be utilized while inside the gunner's primary sight, and this is a tremendous offensive ability of the NATO main battle tanks, specifically the M60A3 TTS, the M1 Abrams, and the M1 IP. It's yet to be seen how the, the currently in development Leopard 1A1A2 will stack up as of now, or even if this ability will be available, so as we're discussing this, we're just going to stick to the Abrams. To utilize automatic lead compensation, simply laze a moving target and gently track that target with your reticle. Hold down your right mouse button to do this. You may notice a subtle snap in the reticle as well, and it may feel slightly off from what you feel you may be manually inputting. This is fine and intended in many ways lets you know the system is functioning as normal. At extended ranges, it may be necessary for you to coax the lead compensation just a little bit to ensure a critical hit by basically just subtly forcing the, the reticle to lead just a touch more. The ballistics computer will also take into account both the target's movement and the M1 IPs when determining the solution, but the solution only considers the distance and speed of the target at the time of lasing. As the target vehicle either gets closer or further away, or even changes speeds, this will throw off the initial data. Relays between rounds for the best chances of a hit, and basically if the target isn't knocked out first try, relays anyways. By simply releasing the right mouse button, this is going to dump the system computation and the gunner can resume manual tracking and targeting if they so desire. Practicing this method on a mission such as Full to Gap, Alpha Point, Legacy Mission, Hold the Line in the M60A3 TTS is a good training tool outside of the firing range. I'll have more recommendations later in the video. The gunner's primary sight can also utilize thermal imaging to aid in target acquisition, and this is actuated by pressing the T key which illuminates hotter objects in a bright green and cooler objects in a dark green to an almost blackened color. Of the many things that lend an advantage to the NATO forces, thermal imaging is one of the largest threats to any Warsaw Pact vehicle you encounter as they have no competing system. In the event the gunner's primary sight has been damaged or destroyed, the gunner can toggle to the gunner's auxiliary sight by pressing the C key. This is a more traditional sight where drop calculations are provided based on range and are specific to the projectile selected. You can illuminate the auxiliary sight's reticle by pressing the I key. While utilizing the gunner's auxiliary sight, functions such as thermal imaging and automatic lead compensation are unavailable. To an extent, the laser rangefinder isn't available, however, there is a workaround to this component. In the event the laser rangefinder is still operational, but the use of the auxiliary sight is required, a gunner can laze the target in the gunner's primary sight, and the corresponding ranging data will be automatically transferred to the gunner's auxiliary sight. 
If utilizing this method and a change of ammunition type is required, for example, going from an APFSDS to a heat FS, the new reticle will be pre-adjusted to the range data being used before the round swap. It is a good idea to get a solid grasp of the gunner's auxiliary sight as you may find yourself needing it more times than you might think. It is a good rudimentary sight that's all about providing the basics in an all skills, no frills kind of way. A final note on the auxiliary sight is that it is offset to the primary sight and may have a slight amount of parallax that tends to hold up and to the right of the primary sight's point of impact. To counter this, simply aim slightly low and to the left. This, of course, can be exaggerated with range, and this isn't an end-all be-all solution, rather a general rule of thumb if you think your shots may be wandering off just slightly. The tank range can only provide a limited or restricted training aid at best. Only when the two-way range is opened and the element of risk is involved that you can truly begin to appreciate the capabilities at your fingertips. For a low-tempo engagement where you can practice utilizing all aspects of the fire control system, including the thermal imaging, the laser rangefinder, and the automatic lead compensation systems, I would really recommend the Mission Abrams Alley. This is located within the Fulda Gap Eastern Hills mission set under the normal missions. This is a low-stress yet dynamic environment in a solo M1IP that is tasked with destroying BTRs, BRDMs, and a platoon of T-55As. Here you should practice ammunition selected based off target type, targeting and engaging with the automatic lead compensation of moving vehicles, and even utilizing the gunner's auxiliary sight as there are plenty of stationary targets to get some gunnery practice in with. The following missions are in the M60A3 TTS, however, they do provide exceptional practice for basic elements of the fire control system components. For the absolute novice, I would highly recommend the mission Long Range. This is within the Fulda Gap Alpha Point mission set, Legacy Missions. And this is a great rudimentary introduction to thermal imaging and laser range finding mechanics in a essentially zero risk environment. Simply drive forward a few meters, engage thermals, and commence descending hate and discontent downrange to a stationary T-55As on the uh, opposite ridge. It's pretty much point and click, but it's a good illustration of uh, the tools that you have. My last recommendation is the previously mentioned uh, in the video Hold the Line mission, which is also within the Fulda Gap Alpha Point Legacy mission set, and it's a great long-range automatic lead compensation mechanic training aid. Uh, and conversely, it is a great mission for getting a feel for manually leading and firing at long ranges after you lays. Uh, it's going to give you a great idea of the heat FS and the APFSD round performance at range and give you a good idea of what the drops are, so if you do ever have to go manual, you'll at least be coming at it with some point of reference. When it comes to NATO main battle tanks, the M1IP and the M1 Abrams are just unmatched on the battlefield in comparison to Warsaw Pack vehicles, especially when you look at the triad of uh, tank design of firepower, protection, and mobility. It's not really hindered in any single category. The M1IP is going to provide a little bit more you know, frontal protection on the frontal arc, but other than that, they both bring to the table some very technologically advanced systems allowing it to spot targets first, utilizing its uh, thermal imaging, as well as calculate an accurate firing solution to allow a first round hit and kill most of the time. Now, don't be afraid to branch out to less capable vehicles within the Warsaw Pack variety. Less capable should never be mistaken for unusable. Gunner Heat PC does a tremendous job when it comes to portraying realistically as possible the gunnery aspect of tank warfare. Each tank may have a unique system to learn and practice, but this only adds to the immersive experience. Be sure to like and subscribe if you liked the video or found it informative in any way. Also, enable the bell notification icon so you don't miss any future Gunner Heat PC videos. Merch is also available in a link in the video's description down below. Hope to see you guys in the next one. Till then, thanks for watching.